to be good. You get more people that are eating. Hey, you caught her, Tom. You caught your mom eating. I mean, talking with her mouth full.
going over all the things that he has taught me in my faith walk. Kara is, is a girl who sets goals and she's determined to reach them, and um, which is very good. When I, I was glad that I got saved when I was as old as I was, I guess, because I fully realized what I'd been missing out on for all of my life. And I made up my mind I didn't want to miss out on anything from that, from that moment on. And I think that my walk with the Lord, Him teaching me to walk by faith, has been the most precious, the most wonderful time because it is the only way that you can really get to know God. And uh, we've had so many tests of our faith, but the victories are so sweet. Never, never, Kara, listen to this. Don't ever fail to trust the Lord. Don't ever be fearful to trust the Lord because he will never fail you. He said something to me in the middle of the night. He said, if we will do what God, if we will do what God says, wait a minute, I got it backwards. If we want the blessings that he has promised to us, just do what he says. And uh, I can't remember exactly how he put it, but anyway, that's that's the main part of it. But The only way you're ever going to really get to know the Lord is to walk by faith. You've got to believe Him. And you've got to know that He's there with you every moment. No matter what the situation you find yourself in, God planned it that way. And He always causes those things to work together for good because He loves us. And we are called according to his purposes. There have been times when it seemed like calamities were happening to us. It was very stressful and very bewildering and perplexing. But in the middle of it all, the Lord never failed to bring us a word of encouragement. Like trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not under your own understanding. Because he's in charge, and it seems like the very worst trials that we went through turned out to be the biggest blessings we ever had. And I want you to know that. I want you to always trust the Lord, and, and you cannot ever get to know him in that sweet, wonderful, personal way unless you dare to take those steps of faith. The Holy Spirit in my walk would lead me one step at a time and then I'd come to a plateau and he'd say, now it's time to trust me for this. And I found that after a while he was cutter cutting ties with the world that we depended on. And he wants us to de de depend completely on him. And I know that these blessings of our walk of faith that the Lord has taken us through has made us to know him better and to just love him so much because he's in everything that happens to you. Don't ever forget that. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. My, one of my very favorite scriptures is Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Surely I will help thee. Surely I will strengthen thee. Surely I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He loves us. He wants us to succeed. And Jesus is the author and finish of our faith. And they that put their trust in him will never, never, never be put to shame. Amen?
something's bad. I brought it home. And I showed it to Carol. Now, I've done smarter things in my life. <laughs> but I showed it to Carol. And, and she brought out two things in that review uh, that, that really speak of a spiritual discipline that we are to have. She pointed out two things. The first was, one thing that wasn't very good in my review was that I have a tendency to lose patience. Huh? Your, your grandfather talked about patience. I had a tendency to lose patience with people. Patience with people who were younger, less experienced, and who I thought knew less than I did. And, and that was not good in the eyes of my employer. The second thing was that for some reason or other I have developed an ability to go out and listen to a customer. And they speak to me and I am able to bring back information that few other people can. Now I realize this is in a worldly situation, but listen, the principles of God, insofar as they can, work in the situations we find ourselves in, in all circumstances, in all circumstances. So on the one hand, here I am impatient. On the other hand, here I am being able to collect information from other people. The Lord really led me to this scripture, and it's out of Philippians, and we know it well. For Paul says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in humbleness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. I'll point out two things here. First of all, that better means superior in station. It doesn't mean better in the eyes of the Lord. For you are precious and unique in the eyes of the Lord. But it means better in terms of in terms of station, really, in terms of station and position. Secondly, the word, the word esteem means really to count. Not because they necessarily deserve it, but because it is the heart and the attitude of a servant. It is the heart and the attitude of a servant. The one who counts others better than themselves, that indeed he may serve. Now Paul goes on to say, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Our Lord came as a servant, and he came to serve to accomplish the will and the purposes of God. My problem was that when I do not count, reckon, consider others better than myself, I become a patient because I think I'm somebody. And in the situations in which God puts me, I am exactly who I am to be, a servant of God, regardless of the circumstances. When I go out and listen to a customer, in that situation, I esteem him and count him better than himself because in, in terms of my employer, he has things that I need to hear. And I win favor in the eyes of man and in the eyes of God. In the eyes of God and in the eyes of man. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in humbleness of mind, the true humility that Jesus Christ had to come as a servant. Count others better than yourself.
silver hair. I got some of that. Not a whole lot. Very little wisdom. I'm growing in life, right? But I selected something that I'm going to give to you, first of all, because I'd like to read the entire book to you. It's such a wonderful book. It's a book by Andrew Murray on humility. And I'm going to give it to you. I want you to read it to If you don't mind the fact that I've marked it all up. <laughs> but more importantly, I want to share a song with you, Karen, that I think embodies the, the thought behind this subject of humility. And, and if I might take a moment here, the song is called Pure Heart. And over and over again, what you're going to hear through the song is, is a phrase, the Father desires. The Father desires. And Kara, that's what you've got to keep focused in on the rest of your life. Not what your dad wants, not what your mom wants, not what anyone wants, but what God wants. What the Father desires. And you know what the Father desires of you? One thing. A pure heart. Nothing else. That's all he desires of all of his children is a pure heart. Some of us are going to become more known than others. Some of us are going to attain to, to things that, that the world would call success and achievement. And those are all well and good. But more importantly, what God wants of each and every one of his children is a pure heart. And so I pray as I sing this song that it just speaks to your heart and will ever keep it pure.
<laughs> Way at the top, 50, 60 feet up. Hi, Dad! That's the kind of child we got to raise. <laughs> She was into everything back then, but you know, you can't tell with children when they're real little. I'm, I'm still blessed that she's willing to climb to the top of the tree. Amen? And trust the one that will help her. And some of you know she's, I don't like to think about it, but in middle August, which is not so far away, Kara's going to be going off to school to Texas. She knows God's called her to become a teacher, and that's what she wants to do. And so she's going to be gone pretty soon. And as I say, I haven't thought about that a whole lot right now. But this song is, uh, is a word to you, Kara, as, as how you must go. You know, she's had a blessing to be raised up in a Christian school and to have the kind of word. I mean, God was so gracious to take us out of Canada when he did and bring us here. his purposes in filling us with his word. Amen. And I just want to say, this is the only time tonight I'm going to, I'm going to speak, so I want to say thank you to everyone here in this whole body. Because what I wanted Kara to receive more than anything else was the bread that lasts forever. Amen. And I just so appreciate everyone that's contributed to that. All of you did a word to make this, this evening such a beautiful time for us. your cares upon him. Lay your life upon him, for only he is worthy to stand. In tribulation, trial, and sorrow, when you can't see through tomorrow, you reveal to you the frailty of a man. Okay. 